Greetings, I am Shad, and I am feeling very Shad today. Which would make sense, because that's who I am. And I want to talk to you about sword design. Now, swords have many elements or qualities if we were to take a look at them. And if we were to look purely in a functional way, which is really where that's all we're going to be looking at in this video specifically, is uh, its design. Like, so the qualities in sword design that has a specific effect in its function in combat. And so a sword, you know, I've talked about uh, cutting, thrusting and chopping, but then there's also reach, there's also hand protection, and all these things come into uh, effect in how a sword is designed. And you can change certain features of a sword's geometry to assist one of these things. If you make it longer, you increase its reach. If you add more hand protection, like a full guard, basket hilt, sweat hilt, of course you get more hand protection then. And then you could also add weight to the top to enhance its cutting ability. You could also add width along its kind, this kind of plane to add stiffness and rigidity to make it more forgiving in the cut. And so there's all the, I find it really intriguing because there are all these specific little design features that you can focus on, which will then change how this sword will perform in combat. And indeed, you can actually pick one of those features and then emphasize it and increase it to a much greater degree to really make a sword that excels in one of these features. Now, obviously, you can go too far. Like if you were to make a sword that has a blade that's two and a half meters long, it becomes completely impractical to use. And so I wonder if this kind of specialized approach in sword design can be detrimental. In some cases not, but there is a very kind of specific type of design elements that people will often put into swords. It's very common, and I'll share what this what, what I feel this one is with you, that really makes a sword excel in one area, but detracts from another. And these swords are often famed for their ability in doing it. And of course, I'm talking about cutting, okay? Because with a sword, swords primarily cut or thrust if you look at their offensive properties. Now, of course, you can hit with pummels, strike with cross guards and everything like that, but let's just look at blade properties. And if we look at bra blade properties only, the main things that you will do with it is either cutting or thrusting. And so when we look at cutting or thrusting, there are many different kind of design elements that can be put in this sword to help out either the cut or the thrust. And so we could make it longer. That, of course, will help out both cutting and thrusting because reach is a huge bonus. But then we could make it fatter or thicker or wider, you know, however you want to call this plane. And that'll help out, well, it helps out in a lot of different ways. It can help out rigidity, which means thrusting, but it also makes it more forgiving in the cut if a sword is rigid. But at the same time, making it thicker will make it heavier as well. Now that can be a good thing and a bad thing depending on how quick you want the sword to be. Quickness is a funny issue as well because a sword that is heavier than another sword, if it's well balanced, can be used quicker and it'll perform quicker than a sword that is a little bit lighter but has horrible balance. Having said that though, if a sword is top heavy in its balance, it'll have more driving force in the cut. And then we have all these really interesting kind of design elements we can look at in a sword which affect these two primary things things, cutting and thrusting. And so this is where I have an, a thought that I want to share with you. With cutting, okay, do you need a sword? Like really, if you're to look at, you know, just straight in combat, you know, throw away, you know, the fancy moves that people can do, do you really need a sword that can chop people's limbs off? Because when it comes to actual combat and uh, the effectiveness of a sword, okay, Effective enough is enough. So let's look at a specific example, and hopefully this example will then be able to be used or extended to other examples. Striking someone in the arm, all right? Now, depending on a sword's cutting capacity will very much determine how deep it will cut into the arm. But when you get to a certain level, which means by cutting right into the bone, like to the bone, say, when you get to that level, that's really all you need, okay? Because you will have fully disabled that person's arm and it'll do the job. Do you then need a sword that could have been capable of cutting through the person's whole arm and chopping their limb off? There are swords that are certainly capable of doing that, but to achieve such, you know, excellent levels of cutting, 
the sword in the design of the sword needs to have been specialized in a, a lot of very specific ways to make it so devastating in the cuts. And generally those design elements will make the sword less effective in the thrust. In my mind when I look at this, cutting someone's limb off as opposed to just cutting them enough where that either will kill them or disable them is complete overkill, okay? You don't need to chop someone's head off to kill them. All you need to do is cut in hard enough, like deep enough, and they will die. And so all you need is a sword to be effective enough in certain areas to be completely serviceable and functional as a sword. And then everything above that can be considered overkill. Okay, so let's take it a step further and try and consider a circumstance where extreme cutting effectiveness becomes into a practical application in a fight. So what I mean here is if we take a sword, say like a long sword, a long sword is a very beautiful, well-balanced sword in, in the ratio of cutting and thrusting. It can do both those things quite effectively. It can't do any one of those things better than other swords that specialize in those things, but what it will do, say it'll cut better than a rapier and it'll thrust better than say a falchion. And so in balance, the long sword and indeed like an arming sword are great swords to look at in regards to this kind of thing we're talking about, balance. And so let's look at a circumstance where a long sword in a practical application, say a battlefield, is there a circumstance where the long sword's cutting effectiveness falls short in one way in which a sword that is pronounced in the cut, specialized in the cut, would be able to do the job that the long sword or say arming sword couldn't. Well, this is the tricky thing. You see, most kind of things that will stop a cut from a long sword will also stop a cut from a sword specialized in cutting, say, katana, falchion, mesa, tolwa, saber. All those swords are specialized kind of cutting swords with, you know, a lot of design elements that are built in to emphasize or increase cutting capacity. In most cases, I do feel anything that can stop a cut from a long sword will also stop a cut from one of these other swords. So then what are you really getting out of this excessive cutting capacity? I mean, in performance, when chopping through, say, tatami mats or pigs or even, you know, chopping someone's head off in a person that isn't wearing armor and stuff like that, they will perform better. But if you look at a person, okay, that, that a long sword might have more difficulty chopping through bone. Of course, long Long swords can, by the way. Same with arming swords. They can chop through limbs. It's just they're not specialized in the cut. That's what we're talking about. And so the long sword will do enough. They will kill someone, all right? Given the same cut from the same person um, and you switch swords between them, both cuts will kill a person. The swords that are specialized in cutting might chop through a whole person, but the one from a long sword will still kill them. And so my thought on this is perhaps, okay, this excessive cutting capacity is a bit of overkill. In fact, it might even be a bit redundant. It might be completely unnecessary. So what about leather? Could a sword with great cutting capacity cut through thick leather where the long sword might not? You know, maybe, maybe. That's hard, it's hard to gauge, okay? Because certainly the swords have different, um, uh, they perform differently in getting through stuff like that. But I wonder, I, I, so, I you know, I'm considering that the difference might be so minute that this excessive cutting capacity it would, could still be useless. Let me know what you think. I mean, this is gonna be a discussion, and so I'd love to hear your input on this. But if my suspicions are correct that this, all this emphasis on extreme cutting capacity is actually pointless because swords that can cut less effectively still cut effectively enough to kill someone in almost every single circumstance where you'll be using these swords, you know, interchangeably. If you compare both swords doing the same cut to the same person, the same circumstance, I generally find in when I look at this that everything that would stop the cut would stop the cut even with the really powerful ones and everything that wouldn't stop the cuts, the long sword would still kill the person, okay? It would perform a devastating enough injury that will completely incapacitate the person still and so you wouldn't even need a sword that is so pronounced in its cutting ability. And so if my suspicions are correct that this is the case, the detriment, the bad thing about it, is that so many of the design features you need to put into a sword to excel, make it excel in the cut, you will detract its effect, efficiency in thrusting. And if this additional cutting capacity is actually 
overkill, complete overkill, that you actually don't need it in a practical sense or a practical application, you lose so much effectiveness in the thrust, which is very useful. You see, the contrast between cutting and thrusting sometimes I think can be misunderstood. Thrusts are easily as deadly as cuts, okay? And a bit of my own opinion here, I could be wrong, but I kind of consider thrusts more difficult to block than cuts, okay? You see, a good thrust, you can do it where you don't telegraph. Like what, if you're looking at this, and of course you wouldn't thrust this way, I'm just doing this to show you perspective and camera, but if you're doing this, okay, there's not much telegraphing as to where the cut is going. But if you're gonna do, sorry, I was talking about thrust there, not cutting, but if you're gonna do a cut, okay, even a very skilled swordsman is going to telegraph a little bit. He moves forward to do it, or you know, to get the cut in and stuff. There's gonna be a bit more telegraphing in any cut than in, in any thrust in a general sense. I'm sure there might be exceptions and uh, you know, there's people out there who know more about this than me, but this is my suspicion. And so one, there's a telegraphing thing in cutting and thrusting, and two, there's the blocking thing, okay? To block any thrust, you actively need to move your weapon to parry it out of the way. If, you're, if your sword is here and the thrust is coming here, you have to move the sword to block, okay? But say someone is cut, coming in from a cut on the side and your sword is already on the side, you don't need to move the sword to block. In fact, in regards to cuts, depending Depending on where you hold your sword, you are completely blocked on one side and you don't need to move the sword at all. And so blocking against cuts are actually easier, in my opinion, than thrusts. This is a big reason why the rapier is such a prominent effective sword, especially in the duel. Why do you think it with you know, a sword that became so popular. Why do you think it become, became so popular? And look at the rapier. The rapier basically said, we're gonna throw out cutting. We don't even care about cuts. We're gonna make something that is just beastie in the thrust. And oh my goodness, the rapier is a phenomenal weapon, all right? There is a big reason why it became the primary dueling weapon of its day. So don't underestimate thrusts. And also, a sword that excels so much in the cuts where it actually throws out almost all or most cutting, like thrusting efficiency. And some swords, granted, don't throw out a thrusting efficiency. They can still thrust effectively. And it kind of goes into that same you know, comparison. Is their thrusting enough? And can they still thrust? Are there cases in which their thrust would not be successful in comparison to a sword that is made to specialize in the thrust? say a rapier and I think there are actually more cases where a sword more specialized in thrusting has more practical application than a sword that is specialized in cutting okay because like I feel with a long sword long sword cuts almost in all cases will cut effectively enough to still kill the person but in regards to thrusts like looking at my friend the katana here there are certain attacks that you will make with the katana that will not be successful but if you were using say a rapier it would have been successful reach is a very big determining factor in this now does that mean that the rapier is the ultimate sword because if I, in my opinion thrusts are as deadly as cuts and in some cases and you know as I think about it, I do feel thrusts are more difficult to defend against than cuts does that mean a sword that is specialized in in thrusting the ultimate sword well there are cases where cuts are preferable to thrusting say if you're fighting more than one opponent or if you're in a bit of a melee well one big solid swipe can be quite effective at one, well, killing more than one person if you get away with it, but two, holding more than one person at bay. I mean, if you look at some of the montante moves, where, where, you know, basically it's great sword moves, these big sweeping moves, there's reasons why people speculate that the great sword is used for like self-defense or, or not, when I say self-defense, I'm talking about used for bodyguards or holding positions and stuff like that. Because when you're swinging that beast around and it has so much of a cutting ratio, you can defend yourself against a lot of people. You probably won't win, all right? You'll just hold, be able to hold them off for a time. But these are examples where cutting can be preferable to thrusting, which means you still want a sword that can still do effective cuts. And the rapier simply can't make effective cuts. It's uh, so lost all cutting capacity because of all those design elements that have been real specialized for the thrust. So I'm not saying that swords that are specialized in cutting can't cut better than say swords that are more balanced like longsword. They can, okay. Uh, falchion, mesa, katana, Tola, Saber, Scimitar, these are all swords that are beasty in the cut, but what I'm saying is their additional cutting effectiveness 
in this context, in this light, as we're looking at it, might be completely redundant. Absolute overkill. Which in my mind makes the, in terms of uh, using them in a, you know, a combative sense, makes them far less effective because they've lost so much ability in their thrusting. So what do you think? What are your thoughts on this theory that I'm sharing with you? Because I'm open to feedback and I could be completely wrong. It's something I'm considering, but th this is what I'm considering, that these specialized cutting swords could be, you know, complete overkill. You would never need that level of cutting power in a real combat scenario. If you can think of one, please share it because as I can't really think of them yet. Not to say that I might not think of something in the future and not to say that you can't, but if this is the case, if we can't legitimately find a real you know, battlefield scenario where that additional cutting capacity would be more effective in disabling your opponent than a standard cut from a more balanced kind of sword, then indeed those swords in their design uh, their additional cutting ability is complete overkill. It's gone way too far. And in the end, the result is a far less effective and versatile sword. So falchion, mesa, katana, tolwa, saber, scimitar, and there's a lot of other examples as well. Are these swords overkill? Let me know. In the meantime, thank you for watching. I'll see you later. Why do I have a sword so effective at cutting? Well, I like to chop people in half. I know I don't need to chop them in half to kill them, but I like chopping them in half anyway. I'm a bit sick that way. I'm a sadist. Maybe if you're only fighting peasants and you have like say 10 peasants coming towards you, a sword that is just insane at cutting and you just, you know, chop three and a half in one stroke. Well, in that case, maybe, yeah, cutting efficiency. Hmm. I got it, I got it. Okay, you're in a jungle and you need to chop your way through the jungle. Cutting, yeah! Oh yeah, that's called a machete. Yeah. All right, a katana or mesa would be able to cut down a tree easier than a longsword could. Or you could use an axe. Yeah, probably an axe would be better. You know, this video might upset people who love those really big cutting swords. You might even say that it cut them to the core. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the laugh. No laugh? Okay.